My plan for this week was to show you the dismantling I was doing before the through hole incident last week, and then probably a walk around with Ophelia after the haul out. But as is often the case, plans that rarely survive first contact with reality. What we're doing here is getting Ophelia underway to the haul out spot, and since Ophelia was intended to be tied up with a port side to land near the crane, we were trying to get the tug in place on the starboard side. I suddenly remembered that Ophelia's rudder doesn't return to neutral on its own, so if we were to have any chance of steering her with the tug, I'd better make sure that the rudder wasn't set for a hard turn to starboard. The tug was needed as the engine unfortunately didn't want to start, likely due to an electrical issue after my gentle deconstruction of the electrical system, so some friendly people offered to help tow Ophelia. Besides the two gentlemen in the tug, I had plenty of help. Three very competent young women, all three professional sailors, had offered their help and the only one who was slightly fussy on everything going on was probably me. As you may have noticed, I'm not the one operating the camera this time. My daughter is giving camera work a go for the first time, so please excuse the slightly shaky performance. I think she's doing okay. With the tug in place on Ophelia's starboard side, we let go of the moorings and set out for the short trip to the crane. We were having a bit of trouble controlling Ophelia with the tug though. She isn't exactly lightweight and one of the tie down spots on the tuck gave up the ghost and it broke. So we decided to go for a simple line tow for propulsion instead and let Ophelia steer on her own rather than the tuck doing both the steering and the propulsion. As you can see the wind wasn't exactly in a cooperative mood, but I had to get Ophelia to the crane that day if I were to have any chance of getting her hauled up the next one. Or so I thought. Shortly after we got everything in place and got underway again, we were hailed from the shore. It turned out that someone at the shipyard hadn't passed on the message that they'd found out that they couldn't help lift Ophelia after all. Her weight wasn't a problem, but her draft of 2.4 meters was, as the water outside the crane was only 2 meters deep. The engine acting up turned out to be a good thing, otherwise we'd have grounded Ophelia at the crane before I was told about the problem. Since it was now pointless to continue to the far end of the harbour, we turned Ophelia around and headed back to where we started. Letting Ophelia steer herself turned out to be a good decision. When the tug only had to provide propulsion, everything went much easier. Mind you, I wasn't the one steering. I left that in the very capable hands of one of my helpers, who very quickly got a handle on Ophelia's little quirks.
As smooth as things were going at this point, there was one minor hiccup. Steering was slightly limited and it was pretty clear that without being able to reverse, something that you just can't do when towing like this, there was really not much of a chance of getting Ophelia back to her own exact spot. Instead we decided to tie Ophelia up at the spot of another project boat which has recently been moved to another part of the harbour where they had direct access to workshop facilities very close to the boat. So for a couple of weeks at least they wouldn't be using their own spot. Tying Ophelia up again was quite easy. There were plenty of onlookers on the quay that were willing to grab a line and pull Ophelia in the last bit. While I unfortunately didn't get Ophelia on the heart this time around, I did confirm that there are plenty of friendly people around willing to give a hand if I just ask for help. After this debacle, I've discussed the issue of getting Ophelia on the heart with the harbour master, and there is one slipway in the harbour which can lift Ophelia out of the water. There are a few issues with that one though. For one, it's quite expensive, around 800 euros or 870 US dollars for the lift, and then 70 euros per day. Secondly, that slipway is currently in use by a ship waiting to be dismantled, and no one currently knows when that process will start. The plug in the broken through hole seems to be holding just fine, no water is getting in at all. So I'm exploring other options for getting Ophelia lifted in order to close most of the through holes, replace the one for the engine cooling and fitting a new set of anodes. Once that is done, I'll find out which options now exist for getting Ophelia sandblasted and painted, seeing that the plans I've had until now have fallen through due to about well, 40 centimeters of excess draft. I hope you'll join me again next week and please do leave a like and click that join button if you haven't already done so. See you then.